Hey friend, I want to thank you for joining me today. At Out of the Box Ministries, we believe that a powerful, vibrant spirituality in the Christian faith is about more than just believing that God exists and that Jesus died on the cross so we can one day go to heaven. God is a loving Father and He wants to see His children succeed. And so we've created tools and resources to help you grow spiritually and succeed in every area of life. Now listen, there's three desires, three things that people in this world seem to pursue. It's those big three. We might call it the unholy trinity. And a lot of times, when we're caught up in the culture, we might even mistake those as our own mimetic desires. I love that word. I was listening to a podcast about that recently, about the desires that we mimic. It may not even be the things that we really want in our own heart or need most of all but we tend to pursue them because it seems like everybody else is and they must be the things that we're supposed to have, the things we're supposed to want. Those things are money, power, and fame. And it seems everybody want, everybody is trying to get that in some aspect of it. Everybody wants a little bit more money. Whether it's I want to have that million dollar a year job, or I wish I had that sports car, or that house, or, or be able to vacation and travel the world, or, or maybe it's fame. I want to be an influencer on YouTube, and I want to have a thousand or a million followers on this platform or that platform, and we all want to go viral. And those are the things that we really pursue. But today, I want to talk about the things that God wants us to pursue. The kind of things that in our life that will not only fulfill our own desires, but help us to grow, to grow in influence, to grow in success, to grow in our joy and our peace in life. Because if we invest our time pursuing these three precious commodities, they will help us experience and attract more of what we really want in our own lives. Those things that really satisfy, the kind of sustainability, the kind of security that God wants us to have. And so these three precious commodities we're going to talk about today are wisdom, reputation, and relationships. And we're going to go into what the Bible says about these three things. So let's start off with wisdom. And it's understanding, again, the first thing that people pursue in this world, in the world's culture, is money. But it says in Proverbs 16, 14, that wisdom is much better than gold and insight more valuable than silver. And it's this idea that rather than trying to pursue money, rather than trying to get rich quick, rather than trying to win the lottery or get all those things that we want in this world, those objects and, and those temporal things, that we should be pursuing wisdom. I love what I talked about last week. It's that thing that God says, what God says to us in Deuteronomy 8.18, it's the Lord your God who gives you the ability to create wealth. You see, if you could chase money, it's, it's fleeting. It'll, it'll just blow away from you. But if you have wisdom, you will not only be able to experience and create wealth, but be able to manage it and enjoy it. So you can take money, you can win the lottery. How many people do we know have won the lottery, made millions of dollars a year in a, in a great job, and then cup only a few short years later find themselves broke and destitute and miserable because they pursued the money instead of the wisdom. Wisdom will give you the ability to create wealth, to see changes as they happen and to make good choices, wise decisions in order to not only create the wealth but manage it well and handle it in a wise way. So wisdom is better than gold or silver. Having insight and discernment is far better than having money in the bank. See, it's about having that kind of wisdom you can use to invest your wealth wisely, to handle your wealth and your money in the right ways that'll continue to allow it to grow. And so while the world may be chasing money, looking for that job or that career that's going to satisfy and make lots of money, and again, a lot of people, what do they do? They look for that job, that career that makes money instead of the job or career that best suits them, best suits their heart's desires. If you, they say if you find the job that you love, you'll never work a day in your life and you'll actually be able to enjoy the work of your hands. That's what God calls us to do. And instead of trying to make yourself miserable to get money to hopefully you can find some enjoyment when you retire or for your short vacations. But if you find the right kind of wisdom to be able to use 
use the skills God has given you and the passions to enjoy your life throughout your career, through your 40, 50 hour work week and on the weekends, how much more valuable will that be? And again, people sacrifice their health, their relationships to make money, and then they don't have anything of real true value. So gaining wisdom is much more powerful than gaining money or wealth. And so God says that precious commodity, gain wisdom above all things. In Proverbs 4, 7, it says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all you're getting, gain understanding, get discernment. And again, this is not about accruing knowledge, but true wisdom and discernment, the being able to stop and think and process through and make the wise decisions. I've heard it said that one of the new superpowers is going to be deep thought. Not just having a lot of information rolling around in your head, but being able to stop, slow down and process it. How many times do people come out with this great new idea and they say, oh, this is the new wise thing, this is the new wisdom, and when actually it doesn't play out in the long run, after it's thought about, that it really ends up being just deceit and lies. The Bible tells us that the first one to give a testimony usually seems right, until someone else comes along and refutes them. And so having wisdom is having that ability to process through the information that's available to us. We look at the, the World Wide Web and there's so much information out there, but there's also a lot of misinformation. So get wisdom and seek wisdom above all else so that you'll be able to live the life that you desire, live the life of fullness. But then as you gain wisdom, you'll start to understand the next things that you should pursue. And the next thing we're going to talk about, this next precious commodity, is a reputation. Finding the right kind of reputation. And again, Proverbs 22.1 says, A good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver or gold. Having a good reputation. Now, in the world in which we live, everybody is all about image. And in fact, in the, in the generation I grew up in, it's always about portraying a good image. Hide your ugly, hide your crazy, and, and show everybody your good side. <laughs> what do we do when we go to church most of the time? We put on a smile and we act like everything is okay. I, I, I love what the Casting Crown song calls it, that stained glass masquerade. But that's not the reputation I'm talking about. Getting a good reputation is being your true, authentic self and having other people affirm that and say, yes, that's valuable. We love in this, in this culture that we're in today, authenticity. We really appreciate when someone just is being who they are, not trying to impress us with fancy things or, or fancy vernacular or words that, and saying the right things, but being true, being honest, being their true self. And we value that. A good reputation is about being able to be yourself in such a way that other people respect you for it. That other people, even if they don't agree with you, they say, you know what, I can respect you that you stand up for your convictions. I can respect the fact that you stand up for who you really are and you're not just trying to impress other people. And a lot of times we spend so much time trying to impress people when really people are gonna be impressed when we just be the person that God created us to be. Having a good reputation is doing that, but it's also doing that with integrity, about treating others respectfully about having integrity, about doing what we say we're going to do and being where we say we're going to be and just serving other people. What kind of reputation do you have? Do you have that kind of reputation where you are known to be trustworthy, known to be faithful, known to be someone people can rely on who will be there for them in their time of need? See, that's the kind of thing that we should pursue. Because when we have the right reputation, when we, when we focus on the reputation that we need to have, rather than the fame, rather than portraying the image of what we think people want to, that will eventually people will see through. But when we have the reputation in and of ourselves, of integrity, of authenticity, of being able to be of our own courage and conviction that people will look up to. That will kind of attract the people to us who will build us up, who will help us grow. Not people who will use us, not people who would just be there for the fun times, but people who really want to work with us and do life with us and, and minister with us and be there for us. When we learn to be there for other people, we'll find that people will be willing to be there for us when we need it. 
So make it your ambition to pursue the kind of favor and good reputation, authentic, that will bring the right kind of people into your life. Because if you're going, spending your time trying to impress people, you will end up attracting other fake people, the kind of people who won't be there, the kind of people that won't have authenticity, that won't have courage, that won't have boldness and conviction in their lives. And you just have fake people surrounding you. So if you really want to have that kind of community that you need to live and survive in, focus on pursuing a good reputation. And obviously, when we do that, that will lead into relationships. And in Proverbs, it says that a man of many companions will come to ruin, but there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And again, this is about having real deep, true relationships, friendships, the people around us that will help us achieve our goals in life. And that is so important. I love what it says in Genesis 1.28. I say it all the time. God saw a man and woman and he said, it is not good for man to be alone. In our American culture, we seem to value independence and autonomy. I can do it all myself. I'm a self-made man. But the reality is that isn't true. I like what Michael Hyatt of the Full Focus Group says. He says, if you are pursuing a dream that doesn't require other people, your dream's not big enough. You see, we were meant to live in community. We were meant to live in relationships. And again, about not having fame, not having a lot of people around us who just want us for our money or what we can give them, but having real good, deep relationships in our lives that we can accomplish great things. Ecclesiastes 4, 7 through 12 says this, Again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For who am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. He goes on to say two are better than one because they have a better return for their work. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie together, they can keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. And he goes on and on about how there's a value in relationships, a value in partnerships, a value in cooperation between people, people that you can trust. And having those types of relationships in your life is more valuable than anything else. There's a parable of Jesus told about a shrewd servant and, and he got into a bind and he went and he helped other people. He offered forgiveness of debt to other people so that even after he lost his job, he had friends around him, friends that he could rely on, friends that would give him a place to stay and a job and opportunities. You see, sometimes in all of our self-made, independent, autonomous desires, we end up making mistakes. We fall and there's no one around to help us up. But when we make it our mission to make sure that we invest in good relationships, even when things fall apart, because they do it sometimes for all of us, we have the people around us to be that support, that network of support, so we can get back on their feet. I found that true in my own life. I've been so blessed to have people around me, even in my darkest and hardest times, lifting me up, lifting me up, being able to serve me and help me get back on my feet, praying for me, ministering to my needs. And it has been so valuable. And God wants you to experience that in your own life. So what we need to pursue, these three precious commodities, are wisdom, reputation, and relationship. And in all these things, it's really about serving others making it our life's ambition not to be so focused on what I want for myself, but again, focused on serving others, learning and growing in ways that I will be able to provide value to other people, that what I'm learning will be able to serve and help somebody else, help somebody else move forward, that I can have the reputation for being helpful, to being good at whatever it is I do, to add value to others' lives and to build that kind of community. And all that God wants us to achieve and experience. Well, I want to thank you, friend, for joining me today. As always, I hope this message has encouraged, inspired, and equipped you to grow in your, your spirituality and succeed in every area of life. I encourage you and invite you to join me next week as we look into a topic of the five levels of faith. 
And until then, as always, remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Yeah.